Aphorisms by Frederick Schlegel from the Lyceum and the Athenaeum, 1797 to 1800, translated by Louis H. Gray. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aphorisms by Frederick Schlegel perfect understanding of a classic work should never be possible but those who are cultivated and who are still striving after further culture must always desire to learn more from it if an author is to be able to write well upon a theme he must no longer feel interest in it the thought which is to be soberly expressed must already be entirely past and must no longer personally concern the writer so long as the artist invents and is inspired he is in an unfavorable situation at least for communicating his concepts he will then wish to say everything a false tendency of young geniuses or an instinctively correct prejudice of old bunglers in this way he mistakes the value and the dignity of self-restraint although for the artist as for the man this is the first and the last the most needful and the highest we should never appeal to the spirit of antiquity as an authority there is this peculiarity about spirits they cannot be grasped with the hands and be held up before others spirits reveal themselves only to spirits here too the briefest and most concise course would doubtless be to prove through good works, our possession of the faith which alone gives salvation. He who desires something infinite knows not what he desires, but the converse of this proposition is not true. In the ordinary kind of fair or even good translation, it is precisely the best part of a work that is lost. It is impossible to offend a man if he will not be offended. Every honest author writes for no one or for all men. He who writes that this one or that one may read him deserves not to be read at all. In the poetry of the ancients, we see the perfection of the letter. In that of the moderns, we divine the growth of the spirit. The Germans are said to be the foremost nation in the world as regards artistic sense and scientific genius. Very true. Only, there are very few Germans. Almost all marriages are only concubinages, morganatic wedlock, or rather, provisional attempts and remote approximations to a real marriage, the peculiar essence of which consists in the fact that more than one person are to become but one, not in accordance with the paradoxes of this system or that, but in harmony with all spiritual and temporal laws. A fine concept, although its realization seems to have many grave difficulties. For this very reason, there should be the least possible restriction of the caprice, which may well have a word to say when it becomes a question of whether one is to be an individual in himself or is to be merely an integral part of a corporate personality. Nor is it easy to see what objections on principle could be made to a marriage a quatre. If the state, with a capital S, however, is determined to hold together, even by force, the unsuccessful attempts at marriage, it thereby impedes the very possibility of marriage, which might be furthered by new and perhaps happier attempts. A regiment of soldiers on parade is, according to some philosophers, a system. A man can only become a philosopher. He cannot be one. So soon as he believes that he is one, he ceases to become one. The printed page is to thought what a nursery is to the first kiss. The historian is a prophet looking backward. There are people whose entire activity consists in saying no. 
it would be no small thing always to be able rightly to say no but he who can do nothing more surely cannot do it rightly the taste of these negationists is an admirable shears to cleanse the extremities of genius their enlightenment a great snuffer for the flame of enthusiasm and their reason a mild laxative for immoderate passion and love every great philosopher has always so explained his predecessors often unintentionally that it seemed as though they had not in the least been understood before him as a transitory condition skepticism is logical instruction as a system it is anarchy skeptical method would thus be approximately like insurgent government at the phrases quote, his philosophy end quote, quote, my philosophy end quote, we always recall the words of nathan the wise quote, who owns god what sort of a god is that who is owned by a man end quote. What happens in poetry happens never or always. Otherwise, it is no true poetry. We ought not to believe that it is now actually happening. Women have absolutely no sense of art, though they may have of poetry. They have no natural disposition for the sciences, though they may have for philosophy. They are by no means wanting in power of speculation, an intuitive perception of the infinite they lack only power of abstraction which is far more easy to be learned that is beautiful which is charming and sublime at the same time romantic poetry is a progressive universal poetry its mission is not merely to reunite all the separate categories of poetry and to bring poetry into contact with philosophy and with rhetoric it will and should always now mingle and now amalgamate poetry and prose genius and criticism artistic poetry and natural poetry make poetry living and social and life and society poetic poeticize wit and fill and saturate the forms of art with sterling material of every kind and inspire them with the vibrations of humor it embraces everything if only it is poetic from the greatest system of art which in its turn includes many systems within itself down to the sigh the kiss which the musing child breathes forth in artless song it can so be lost in what it represents that it might be supposed that its one and all is the characterization of poetic individuals of every type and yet no form has thus far arisen which would be equally adapted perfectly to express the author's mind so that many artists who desired only to write a romance have more or less described themselves romantic poetry alone can like the epic become a mirror of the entire world that surrounds it and a picture of its age and yet free from all real and ideal interests it too most of all can soar midway between that which is presented to him who presents on the wings of poetic reflection it can ever reintensify this reflection and multiply it as in an endless series of mirrors it is capable of the highest and of the most universal culture not merely from within outward but also from without inward since it organizes similarly all parts of that which is destined to become a whole thus the prospect of an endlessly developing classicism is opened up to it among the arts romantic poetry is what wit is to philosophy and what society association friendship and love are in life other types of poetry are finished and can now be completely analyzed the romantic type of poetry is still in process of development indeed it is its peculiar essence that it can eternally only be in process of development and that it can never be completed it can be exhausted by no theory 
and only a divinatory criticism might dare to wish to characterize its ideal it alone is infinite even as it alone is free and as its first law it recognizes that the arbitrariness of the poet brooks no superior law the romantic style of poetry is the only one which is more than a style and which is as it were poetry itself for in a certain sense all poetry is or should be romantic in the ancients every man has found what he needs or desires especially himself the french revolution fichte's wiesenschaftsern doctrine of science in goethe's wilhelm meister are the three greatest tendencies of the age whoever is offended at this juxtaposition and whoever can deem no revolution important that is not boisterous and material has not yet risen to the broad and lofty viewpoint of the history of mankind even in our meagre histories of culture which for the most part resemble a collection of variant readings accompanied by a running commentary the classical text of which has perished many a little book of which the noisy rabble took scant notice in its day plays a greater role than all that this rabble did it is very one-sided and presumptuous to assert that there is only one mediator with a capital m to the ideal christian and in this respect the unique spinoza comes nearest to being one everyone ought to be a mediator with a capital m he alone can be an artist who has a religion of his own an original view of the infinite it is a peculiar trait of humanity that it must exalt itself above humanity plato's philosophy is a worthy preface to the religion of the future man is free when he brings forth god or makes him visible and thereby he becomes immortal the immortality of a book lies not in its theme or in the relation of the writer to his public but in the spirit of the treatment if this breathes the full abundance of humanity it is moral if it is merely the work of an isolated power and art it is not moral he is an artist who has his center within himself he who lacks this must choose a definite leader and mediator outside himself naturally not forever but only at the first for without a living center man cannot exist and if he does not yet have it within himself he can seek it only in a human being and only a human being and his center can arouse and awaken the artist's own end of aphorisms by frederick schlegel